Hey, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Christie's Beautiful Life 30 Days of Sketches, round seven. And today we are using this sketch from Sketches in Time. And it's a pretty simple sketch. There is some mixed media in the background going on, and then those stars and the two photos and the journaling around the outside with a big title. Um, not a whole lot to it. N not much in the way of paper layers or anything like that. So I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do, but then... As I was preparing to do this, um, I was watching Vicki Booten do one of her live Friday night Facebook things, and she was talking about embossing powder um, as a resist, which I know you can do that, but you can use a lot of other things as a resist as well. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to play with my paper glaze because I just love this stuff. So I pulled that out, um, and paper glaze is from Picket Fence Studio, and I'm using it in Snowdrop White, which is one of my favorite colors to use. Um, it goes on so smooth and it goes on like butter and it dries quick, which is what allowed me to get a lot of mixed media done in a short amount of time because I didn't have to wait too long for one stencil area to dry before I could go in and do the next area. So I started with those pinwheels and then I am moving on to this one that has these lines. It's, it's called um, something bones. Oh my goodness, I'm going to have to remember the name of it. I'll have to look it up for you. But um, it just looks like vertical or horizontal lines, depending on which way you, you put the stencil. And then I had these polka dots, which I think is possibly supposed to be snow, but um, I decided to put that on there as well. I wanted a lot of different stuff going on in, in this particular layout. And I was just in the mood to play with mixed media, so that's what I'm doing. Um, and then I'm going to add a ton of color to this. So... Ooh, you can really see it right there. That looks so cool. Um, even seeing it on the screen after I've already played with it, it looks really cool and like a lot of fun. So uh, this layout pretty much kills that bottle of paper glaze. I think I had just enough to do a little bit on one more layout after that. And um, then I had to buy a new bottle. Well, actually, I had already bought a new bottle because it was only it was almost empty. And it's a jar. I don't, I don't know why I keep saying bottle. It's a jar. Um, so then I pulled out my Dilutions inks. And I am using... Oh, let's see. I think I'm using... I think it's Postbox. I think it's called... Yeah, Postbox Red. And Tangerine Dream. And Pure Sunshine. And Lemon Zest. Sorry if my voice got a little bit away from the screen there or the it faded out. I was just reaching up to grab those bottles to tell you what they were. Um, and that's what I'm playing with. I'm just using them in my watercolor pan. I spritzed a little bit in there. I'm picking them up with some, uh, adding a little bit of water to them and playing with them. And then I am using some Vicky Booten art crayons with some water and adding those colors just to see what the different colors would do and offer. Um, at the end of the day, you can't tell which one's which <laughs> on, the, on this particular layout, but this whole thing is going with these nice warm colors of red, orange, and yellow, and I like how it looks so far. I'm sorry I'm off screen there. I'm trying to uh, spray it and move some, some uh, water around on the surface there, and if you're wondering what my paper is taped down to, I, it's just a piece of foam board that is covered in packing tape, and I've said this in a few other videos, but in case you missed it, um, I use like a 14 by 14 inch piece of foam board. You just buy the regular foam board and cut it to that size, and I cover it with packing tape and make the packing tape overlap by just a bit so that it creates a vape, uh, water barrier between the foam board and your paper, and I tape it down, and I just let it dry on that foam board until it is completely dry, and I mean completely dry and it comes out flat. So I don't have the warping. It does warp and buckle while you're working on it. As you can see there, there are some bumps, but when it dries, it will dry flat again. Um, at least that's my experience with it. So I, and I, I just love how it comes out and you'll see when I'm all done with it and it's dry, how it came out um, nice and flat. So I am just going to keep working on this. And you know with mixed media, it's one of those things that you have to just keep going over it um, multiple times because it, it takes a lot of layers for it to look good. At least that's what I have found. 
<laughs> so I just keep working it. And there was gesso down on that paper before I started, and it is just a piece of cardstock. It's not um, it's not foundations paper. It's not watercolor paper. It's just a plain old piece of white cardstock. Um, and I think by taping it down, it really just helps it to take all of that water. Um, when I do remove the blue tape, there will be a white edge around uh, where the mixed media did not make it underneath the blue tape. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of puddling next to it as well. But what I do is I typically cut off a quarter of an inch all the way around and then I mount the whole thing onto a piece of like black cardstock or navy blue or whatever color I happen to be using. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with this piece as well. I'm going to mount it on the piece of black cardstock when I am ready to, um, when the layout is all finished. I'm just adding in more of those art crayons, mixing up some more color. I'm trying to get these colors to be more, vibrant's not the right, right word, um, to have more depth maybe, or to be darker. Yeah, maybe darker is the right word way to describe it. I'm trying to get them to be darker because the red, as it dries, it's drying a little bit on the pink or pink side or a little more transparent than I really want it. Um, I want some good coverage and I want it to be bold and striking. So even when I get done with all of this watercolor type product, which is not really watercolor, it's inks out of the bottles, but you could do this with watercolor. You could do it with um, acrylic paint that's watered down. Uh, you could do it with the art crayons like you see me using there. You could use it with, do it with any of your mist sprays. Um, so there's a lot of options <laughs> in using this technique and adding this watery effect. Now, of course, it doesn't look like water. Maybe it looks more like blood because it's red. I don't know. But, um, but it's, I'm playing with it like it is a watercolor. So I just want those colors to be a lot darker than they are actually appearing at this moment in time. So I do end up putting the whole thing aside, and then I end up coming back to it with another layer, and I play with it more. And so I'm leaving a lot of this in, and I apologize that the video is really long because I'm leaving a lot of the mixed media in, but I know a lot of people really like to see the process of the mixed media, I think it really helps with the learning process and understanding what works in which way. So I intentionally left it in there and it is sped up quite a bit, but not so much that you can't make out what is going on. So uh, this did take me a couple of days to work on because I set it aside and I came back to it again and then um, I set it aside to dry and then I came back to it yet again. And so when I came back to it the last time, I pulled out my oxide inks and um, because it wasn't still wasn't quite as dark you can see some of the areas of red look a little more pink but I really wanted that bold red color so I went over it with those oxides and I am using let's see festive berries um, some spiced marmalade and some fossilized amber and I think some squeezed lemonade in those areas but you can see that's giving it a really really bold bold color and I like how that is another thing that it is doing is it's helping to cover up some of the areas where the ink had pooled because the ink pooled between some of that mixed media like those lines and you could see like it looked like a little pool of ink where it had the darker outline around the outside and I didn't want that showing quite as much as it was so it's kind of covering that up a bit as well. So the oxides are really doing a good job of it, but um, it's also covering up a lot of the stencil work that I did. But I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to go over the whole thing with the baby wipe and reveal that stencil work again. So here I am. I'm taking one of the distress tools, the little foam app applicator tool. I took the foam off. I just have the uh, Velcro on there, and I put the baby wipe over it and I'm rubbing it across and you can see how it's revealing all of that beautiful mixed media work. Um, I've never actually used this technique before of using the, that applicator but I thought with such a large surface it was a good way to do it to remove uh, remove it in a quick way rather than just going with my finger because if you go with your like your finger 
is soft and it will get down in those grooves whereas that applicator is not um, and then I went through and I sprinkled some ink over it and I wasn't too crazy about how that looked either just because it, it created that pooling effect again so I quit doing that pretty quickly but I added some gold splatter and that I liked because the gold did not pool like the red and you can see the red there on the one side and you can see how much ink is on that page because it has gone through and that is even using gesso and you saw how flat that was as well you can see it totally dried flat it's not buckled there's no uh, warping or anything like that um, occasionally I, I do have some that come out where they do have a little bit of warping and that's usually because I don't get a good seal on the tape and so it pulls pulls out from underneath the tape and then it buckles so I was looking through my bin of little black goodies there and I was gonna use that uh, viewfinder reel but then I remembered I had these offcuts of these star cut files and those are from the Creative Cuts Club. They came in, I think it was the February, no, the January kit. I'm pretty sure it was the January 2021 kit. And I used them on a layout live in the Creative Cuts Club, but uh, these were the off pieces that I did not use. So I put those on there. I love how that looks. And then I had these stickers that, actually they may not even be stickers. They might be from Simple Stories, I'm not really sure. Um, if I can see them really quickly here, I will tell you who they are from. Um, they are simple stories and they are called Birthday Blast. And that happy birthday was written in like a purple color. I just went over it with my black Sharpie to turn it into a black um, happy birthday because I don't want purple on this layout. I want black and the Sharpie works great. The Sharpie that I'm using is one of their brush tip Sharpies which I think goes over those kind of things a lot easier than if you're using one that has like a hard tip, a hard nib on it. Um, the, the softer nib goes over it a lot easier. And with all mixed media, when you're trying to glue stuff down, you got to use liquid glue, otherwise it does not stay. So I'm using my um, Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and I'm just adhering that down. And uh, these photos are of my son, it's his birthday and his girlfriend, we were in the backyard just uh, enjoying some dinner together and then I made him a peanut butter pie. Uh, it's, peanut butter is one of his favorite things so I made that peanut butter pie and um, we had that for dessert. And then in that same Simple Stories package uh, is these flags. Is? Are these flags? <laughs> and um, so I like those. They say yay and something else. I can't remember what the other one says. Maybe wow or something. Um, and then these two little foam hearts and some little like confetti streamer type things. And so I'm just using those and they are tone on tone. So they are sub subtle, which is fine with me. I don't mind that at all. Um, I think it, it adds to the texture and the interest of the page. It's a little bit harder to see on the screen than it is in person. In person, you can see them just fine. And that little uh, piece at the bottom, that chipboard piece that says smile for the camera, that is from one of Vicki Booten's old collections. It's in the package that I am using right there. And I'm pulling the numbers 23 because that is how old he is turning. Um, and then I play around with where I want those. And then I like this tab, but again, it's purple. So I'm changing the color with my Sharpie again. And like I said, that those brush tip the brush tip sharpies make it a lot easier to cover up because you get better coverage and that's what I'm using there and you can't even tell it was purple by the time I'm done with it I go over it a couple times and it's nice and black and um, just having fun kind of putting my embellishments where I want them while I work on that I, let me tell you Christy has been doing this uh, series this is her seventh go around so there are will be seven times 30 sketches in her Facebook group which is linked down below and there are a whole bunch of other people that are playing along throughout the month. The list is quite long down below and I'm not sure uh, if everyone is playing along today on the list but during the month at some point they have been playing along so um, you can go and visit their channels and check out what inspiration they have for you as well. Um, it's pretty exciting because it, it's, it's a lot of fun to play along and to see all of the different takes on all of the different layouts and um, like I said this this particular sketch did it has mixed media on it but there's a lot of white space and 
mine doesn't necessarily have a lot of white space, but um, it doesn't require a lot of embellishing because there's so much in the way of the mixed media. So I hope you've enjoyed my video today. I thank you so much for watching and spending time with me. I will be back again tomorrow with another video for you. And I thank you so much for um, commenting. If you have questions or comments, leave them down below. I will get back to you as quickly as possible. Go check out Christy's channel. Check out all the other ladies that are playing along. I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.